Hello, this is Nikki Tamara for Top Gear Philippines, and I'm here with a brand new 2021 Geely Okavango. And I'm eager to find out how it compares to the competition. Now, unlike Geely's initial offering, the Geely Cool Ray, the Okavango is based on an all new platform that it doesn't share with Volvo, even though the engine, transmission, and turbo, they're mostly shared with Volvo anyway. But aside from that, the Okavango gives you 7 seats and a 48 volt EMS mild hybrid system. Now, will this mild hybrid system be enough to elevate it over your typical diesel MPV? Let's find out. Styling wise, the Okavango is a bit of an odd duck. Neither here nor there. It aspires to the SUV look with its chunky front end and a squared off rear end and those cutaways over the fenders that suggest the blistered fenders of a true off-roader even though it doesn't have the tires of a true off-roader or the ride height. That said, it is a very pretty seven-seater. It's got that nested grille as on the Cool Ray floating roof rails. I'm not sure how functional they are but they are very pretty and it's got these beautiful wheels that complement the body very nicely. Very good job by Keely. It's inside where the premium nature of the Okavango hits you in the face like a 2x4 whack across the face. It is nice in here. You've got contrast stitched leatherette everywhere. You've got pebbly textures. You've got brushed metal accents and you've got a, well, a lot of plastic. Yes, a lot of hard plastic even here on the dashboard, but it's good looking hard plastic and they're in places that you will normally not touch. You've also got this big 10.2 inch touch screen in the middle, which is wow. And you've got a big screen in front of you where the instrument cluster should be. They don't even attempt to disguise it with false cutouts or binnacles. It's just a screen there and I'm not going to complain. It's really pretty. As for storage, you've got a hidden glove box. You've got this neat two-tier center console where you can store your gadgets underneath and charge them with the multiple USB ports. You've got two in front, two in the rear, and you've got a 12-volt socket on the hidden shelf underneath. And you've got two cup holders and a center console box here, and that's about it. Two cup holders, entire car. That all said, storage space is fine. You've got a huge space back there with third row folded, although you have to remove the headrests to fold the third row, which is kind of a pain if you're already standing there out back with the groceries in your hand. With the third row up, there's enough space back there for actual adult legs, which is good. In terms of power, this has the same 177 horsepower, 1.5 liter, three cylinder turbocharged engine as the Geely Cool Ray. It also has a 48 volt hybrid assist system that adds 13 horsepower for 190 horsepower total, which means this car can get to 100 kph in around nine seconds, which is pretty quick. In fact, if you want quicker, you'll have to go up to the 2 million plus level for the turbocharged CX-9. Now the hybrid system is not being sold on the basis of power. It's actually being sold as a way to save fuel, which is a big consideration when you're trying to sell a gasoline MPV crossover, whatever, against diesel MPVs and SUVs. But in heavy traffic, when you're at a stoplight, there's little you can do. The engine turns off for a few minutes, then you know, you're sitting for several minutes in traffic on EDSA, the engine will come on again to charge the batteries and that's all she wrote. So while we've got in highs of 20 to 21 kilometers a liter on the highway, in traffic, 5 to 7. Now to drive, the Okavango is pretty fantastic. It does have a torsion beam out rear but that has a beefy pan hard bar holding it in place. And it's got good anti-roll bars up front so it corners on a pretty even keel. The steering is precise and responsive, especially in sport mode, which firms it up even though it is not heavy. And 
when you get into a corner, that front end just tucks in and it feels wonderful. It feels like an enthusiast car, albeit one with seven seats. But where you would normally use it, say on the highway or in the city, you'll feel the compromises of having a setup like that. You'll feel a little bit of stiffness over bumps and with a beefy anti-roll bar, when you hit a single wheel bump, you're going to get that thrown a little bit to the side. Instead of having the articulation to just take one wheel bumps like an SUV does, just eats them up. No, that's not what this car does. But that said, over bigger heaves, there is enough softness to just smother them. So at higher speeds on the highway, it's pretty good. Around the city, you'd expect that something this big would be difficult to drive, but not really. The width does not bother you at all. The width, the height, nothing. Instead, it's parking that's the problem because you've got that tall hood and you've got that long wheelbase so it's hard to judge where your wheels are and thank goodness this has the same 360 degree camera as the Geely Coolray because that helps you a lot in parking lots. Aside from that camera, you've got other toys, obviously the 10.2 inch touchscreen, but no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Instead, you have what's called QD Link. It's a Chinese app. Don't worry, it's not a scary one at all. I've got it on my phone and I can hook up just fine. And the advantage this has over something like Android Auto is, it doesn't have the nannies in Android Auto that prevent you from playing videos while you're in the car. You shouldn't play videos while you're moving, but when you're in a parking lot waiting for someone, you can call up a video on YouTube and just chill. So with all the toys, all the features, all the luxuries, and the fantastic design, is the Okavango something that you would spend your money on? Well, consider that the top of the line Okavango is under 1.5 billion bucks. That's with the panoramic moonroof. If you would like to forego the panoramic moonroof, you step down to the 1.35 million range around thereabouts and you get all the same features minus the moonroof. Most of the PPV SUVs start at 1.5 million. In fact, Toyota's own MPV, the Innova, it goes up to 1.7 million and it has fewer features than this. Instead, this thing feels like it competes with cars that cost 500,000 pesos more. This is comparable to MPVs like the Kia Carnival or maybe even the Mazda CX-8, which is, yes, it's a crossover, but it sits somewhere in the same size range. This feels like luxury done right and done at a good price point. It's not going to fool you into thinking the interior is worth that much. But in terms of features, in terms of build quality, in terms of what you get under the hood, this is a grand bargain for what Geely is asking for it. So until next time, this has been Nikki Tamayo for Top Gear Philippines, signing out.